Oh, hi. Welcome to another episode of Howdy Partner. We're here on AWS On Air, and this is the show all about APN partners. So each episode, we meet with a new partner, and we learn more about what they do and when to utilize their solution for working with AWS. And today, we're here with new friends from Aptio, Jeremy and Eugene. I'm A.M. Grabelny. I'm a dev advocate here at AWS. I uh, you might have seen me on Twitch at some point uh, doing this show. And I'm joined by, by a wonderful ho- co-host here, Braden. Braden, you want to introduce yourself and then we'll kick over to Jeremy and Eugene. Sure thing. My name is Braden Caronte. I'm a partner solutions architect. You may have also seen me on, on a, other episodes of Howdy Partner. And uh, yeah, we're, I'm glad to be here and I'm especially glad to have Jeremy and Eugene join us today. Cool. And you're going to be asking them some questions alongside me. Right. We're going to learn all there is to know about Aptio, I think, today, right? Is that right, Jeremy and Eugene? Jeremy, let's start with you. What do you think? Uh, I think so. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm VP of Engineering at Aptio, um, and I'm really excited to be on the show today. And Eugene. Yeah, and, and, and I hope so. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Eugene Kovastov, uh, VP of Product and Engineering, Engineering here at Aptio, and really excited to, to be on with you guys today. Okay, cool. So who is the lucky person who's going to give us a rundown of what Aptio is and why as an AWS developer, I should, I should care about Aptio? Uh, well, we drew straws and I'm the lucky one. So, oh, um, <laughs> so for those that, that don't know, Aptio as a whole provides uh, products and solutions for folks to manage their technology spend and really optimize that spend to understand where your resources are going uh, from your headcount, your infrastructure, your software, and everything in between that you need to run the technology uh, part of your business. But we also provide a cloud specific tools, cloud cost management products, such as Aptio Cloud Ability, which is where we provide the ability for not just financial folks, but also developers to come together and do the right thing in terms of making their dollar go as far as possible on the cloud and therefore really allow themselves to focus on the core areas of their business, the products they're building, rather than the business of managing the cloud resources, how much they're costing you, where you can uh, save money, which resources you should be using and things of that nature. So it's it's an exciting space that we're in and really excited to talk more about it with you here today. Yeah, so this is everyone's favorite topic, right? Money um, and how to how to spend less of it. I think that that actually impacts every single aspect of the business and every single person in it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we've heard a lot from from various leaders at AWS about how easy it is to come in and start building and spin things up on the cloud. What's not so easy is to rein that in once you actually are starting to get AWS bills, right? So, uh, maybe maybe. Give a rundown for us. You know, if I were to go, you know, sign up for Aptio today, uh, what's one of the first things that I could do in terms of financial accountability in in and running things in the cloud? Yeah, well, we'll all start, and then maybe uh, Jeremy can uh, dovetail on from the engineering side. But uh, with cloudability, especially, you get immediate value. What you can do is is jump in. Uh, we have trial opportunities for you as well, so so it's free to try and. With a couple of quick uh, connections and uh, permissions that you provide us to read your AWS billing files, you immediately get uh, things like uh, some canned reports and dashboards that we populate for you based on your historical data. You get some recommendations on where you can save money, uh, either through commitment-based optimization. So AWS offers, of course, reservations, reserve instances, and savings plans opportunities, as well as resource-based optimizations. Where are you maybe over-provisioned uh, in your EC2 instances? Where do you have some idle uh, EDS volumes? Where are you over in your RDS uh, instances? So on and so forth. And then the beauty comes in, in working with your uh, partners to then execute on those recommendations. That's what uh, Jeremy and team uh, have looked at internally on our side and, and our uh, partners and customers do so for their own environments. Especially with you know all the new services being launched and, and constant innovation, one of the things that you're, you need to answer is, you know, how do I 
pay for these services? Which ones can I use? How much is it going to cost me? Um, and can I can I spin up these new resources? Can I try the, these new things that are coming out? Um, and if this is cloud cloudability really does help you answer that in partnership with your finance team and other engineering teams to answer like what can I optimize? What can I save on? And then really how can I reinvest that into new development opportunities? That sounds great. And actually, let's let's drill into that a little bit. So how can AppScale help developers with managing and optimizing their containerized workloads in the cloud? Well, we actually have uh, quite a bit of that running ourselves. Uh, I think Jeremy could uh, give you some details on, on both how we do it ourselves and then also how using our own uh, tools like CloudAbility and then how some of our customers do as well. Yeah, so we were super excited to see the announcements around uh, EKS where, and um, uh, ECS as well. We run a lot of our workloads in containers, greater than 40 plus percent of them currently. Uh, we've actually been in the process of migrating to containers over the course of the year uh, from on-premise to, to AWS. And so this is a really relevant thing for us as well. Um, and one of the things that you know we're trying to get insight into is, you know, as I spin up these container resources, you know, what products are, are costing the most money to run? Who should I attribute this spend to? Uh, CloudAbility has uh, container cost management capabilities that allow you to apportion uh, the spend within uh, your Kubernetes clusters to, to various stakeholders, to various departments, to various engineering teams. So you can figure out which team is, you know, is using these resources, how well are they utilized? Um, and that's the level of transparency that you get there really just helps you justify you know, that, that spend. It helps you prove to your teams that they're getting good value out of the services that they're, they're using. Totally makes sense to me. Now, I've heard a little bit about CloudAbility Shift. Uh, can you tell us what, what that is and, and more about it? And also, what's exciting about CloudAbility Shift? Why have I heard of it? I, I, I feel like it's yeah, very exciting. I, I, so, so as the name implies, CloudAbility Shift is helping you understand how you shift workloads to the cloud. Um, and this is a journey that Appy has gone on throughout the year uh, with moving workloads to AWS, as I mentioned. And one of the things you need to understand is what is that going to cost, um, and not just in a you know, at a single point in time, you know, and I know you can use various tools to give you like what is EC2 going to cost you, but how, how do I understand a plan for how that spend ramps up over the course of one year or you know, three years? Um, and especially, you know, as you decide, you know, and plan out th these investments, you, you want to look at how I factor in reserve instances or savings plans. How do I factor in um, an enterprise discount programs and other d discounting mechanisms into that plan so I get an accurate picture of what my cloud spend will cost you know, one year, two years, three years, um, and so that I can build that plan with my finance team and get approvals to move forward in, of doing so. I think that's one of the big hurdles is that, you know, I can get a snapshot of what the cloud is going to cost, but I need to build a meaningful plan and have that be something that I execute on over time. And then as I migrate to the cloud uh, and, you know, I, I need to be able to track that spending. And that's where, you know, we have that end-to-end -end life cycle in cloud really shift, helping you move those workloads to the cloud and, and then cloud ability and helping you to monitor and manage that spend over time. Great, and actually, kind of on that point, you know, you're, you're talking about justifying spend, you know, bringing snapshots to to the finance team. How does CloudAbility surface the right insights to different audiences, like the finance team, developers, or IT leaders? Yeah, I can take that one. Uh, when you say the right instances, really for us about both understanding the customer's environment, and we do that by learning about it. Uh, we run some machine learning algorithms in the background identify which instances are uh, most uh, suited for optimization and actually provide you options. So that's one of the key things that we look for. We recognize that no matter how much uh, we do and how advanced we get, we're, we're never gonna know your environment as well as you do. Uh, so what we provide are, are several options with each recommendation, uh, each right sizing recommendation that seeks to trade off that, that level of, of, of risk and benefit, risk being you know, how aggressive do you want to get in downsizing uh, relative to how much money or opportunity there is to save? Uh, but the, the other side of that coin is really being able to uh, bring together the developers and the finance teams so that there's a common language and that there's an easy automated process by which to evaluate those. And just recently, we announced our partnership with Atlassian, where we have an integration directly with uh, Jira software, Jira service desk, Jira service management, whichever one you use, either or both, 
where you can automatically populate uh, the JIRA projects, for example, with the recommendations that are relevant to you and your teams. And this can be done uh, directly through the Cloudability uh, Console or actually by setting policies. So you can automatically receive those recommendations that are, of course, relevant to you, but also are worthwhile to you. You can say, hey, I don't actually want to see uh, right sizing or termination recommendation unless I'm going to save more than 10,000 bucks, right? Anything below that really isn't worthwhile for me. Uh, and, and that really helps to get the right recommendations from the right people. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna execute on all of them, right? There may be reasons that you have additional headroom, uh, but it does help you become more efficient in evaluating those recommendations and executing on the ones that are actually beneficial. You've mentioned a lot. Um you know, some various things that, that immediately save people money, you know, over provisioning, oversizing instances. These are things that, yeah, we, we definitely see all the time too. Uh, I'm just curious, you may not have the data right in front of you, but uh, just anecdotally speaking, what's some of the things that you see, you know, across all the customers that you've worked with uh, that, that they're not doing right, that they should, you know, all go and, and take a look at their environment and, you know, could save them some money today if they were to go make these simple changes? Yeah, uh, well, the one that immediately jumps to mind uh, is looking at those resources, the ones you mentioned that are over-provisioned, uh, underutilized, and idle. Uh, to your point earlier, in terms of the immediate value, typically we'll see uh, at least 15, sometimes upwards of 20 to 30% of savings available immediately when we first enable a customer based on those total data. Um, but that one's a bit of a layup, right? That's an easy one you gave me, but what, what do we see in terms of best practice for customers to not only identify savings opportunities, but also keep a clean and, and tidy environment, uh, free of, uh, well, well, cruft on the billing data side is really around identifying your resources, tagging them correctly. And oftentimes we find that maybe you haven't been doing so in the past, and it's really hard to, it's not impossible to go back in time with uh, anything that's kind of available out of the box, whereas Cloudability does allow you to do that. You can actually create what we call business mappings, uh, conditional logic that will allow you to uh, actually go back and, and re-tag those resources, and then also apply those uh, tag mappings going forward, of course. And that way you get a nice clean view of uh, what resources belong to what environment or what uh, project team or what product team uh, or what release train or any and all of the above. So that's one where uh, we, we like to uh, help our customers along, but also they, they, they tend to find it pretty quickly and pretty easily. It's also available via API, so, so folks really love that. I was also going to add to Eugene's point, like one of the key things there is this concept of views that you can create. And, and one of the things that I've really has really helped me with my engineer teams is you need to drive accountability, right? You need teams to understand what their spend is and be able to create views that, are, that you know, are specific to them uh, and, and you know, roll up their spin and show their their individual or, or you know, specific team opportunities, that, that's meaningful because they can is, take action, right? Like I think it, it's really hard at an abstract level, you see all these savings, but you need someone to do that work, right? You need someone to either spin down the instances or consolidate instance, instance families so you can buy RIs or savings plans. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a developer is going to get involved in making that decision. And, and and unless they can see that data, they're not able to make that data-driven decision. This really helps them do that at that individual accountability level. And, and just to follow up on that, I actually, and I, I'm blanking on the, the name of the author right now, but there's an O'Reilly book that I, I've really enjoyed. I haven't finished it yet, but I've been reading, essentially the name of it is FinOps, right? Which it's, it's writing on these like DevOps, DevSecOps type, type amalgamations of essentially everybody's job is finance, right? Like everybody should be caring about finance, just like everybody should be caring about ops in in, in uh, these these new teams and, and new companies, and and how we're we're building software in today's world. Is that what you all see when you have conversations with your customers? Uh, are you seeing more people paying attention to finance across the board, not just the accounting team, uh, but even in in the IT teams as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that as cloud becomes a larger share of uh, a budget, either either an entire corporate budget or the technology budget itself, uh, you start to get more eyeballs on it, right? You start to uh, have more people who want to understand, and that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Uh, and like you said, 
everybody should be interested and everybody should be good stewards of the business uh, because that's in everybody's best interest in, in, in the company. Uh, the, the trick is how do you make that easy, right? You, you can uh, do things the hard way or you can seek to simplify, automate, uh, and, and make things translatable, understandable, right? Finance is not going to speak the same language that uh, DevOps is and is not going to speak the same language as uh, some of the business is, right? So uh, how do you how do you translate that? So that's what we really seek to do. Uh, the FinOps Foundation is a great way to learn more about that uh, at the Accountability as a founding member there. Uh, but it's also bigger than just the uh, the cloud financial engine, right? You, you want to look holistically at uh, your uh, cloud costs and, and the infrastructure and platform side, as well as on the SaaS side. Uh, so you want to know what you're spending on Chef or Jenkins or any other uh, SaaS delivered products to run your cloud infrastructure. Uh, and, and that's where you start seeing folks really get value. And that's where you start seeing more eyeballs, right? It starts coming together as a bigger picture. Jeremy can paint a better picture to our uh, finance team now today because he can say, hey, here's what we spent holistically on running these products. Here's what it cost me to do it. Uh, and here's how we can you know, uh, pull levers here, uh, twist knobs here to, to maybe change some things and adjust. Uh, but more importantly, my developers understand that, right? They also know what we spend on these uh, products and what they can do to uh, you know, be more efficient in spending. To, to give credit where credit is due too, I, I looked up the book as, as we were talking. Uh, it's called Cloud FinOps Collaborative Real-Time Cloud Financial Management by J.R. Storman and Mike Fuller. So check that out. I've been reading it. It's, it's a really interesting book actually, very, very, interesting perspective on on how finance impacts the entirety of all departments right yeah right now, for sure. you have a question too, right? yeah absolutely so uh I, jeremy and eugene i actually heard that appio supports the launch of uh professional services on the aws marketplace can you give us a little bit of insight into that a little bit more details and your thoughts on that Yeah, I think Jeremy's team actually worked on some of that. So Jeremy, you've got more insight yeah. than Eugene. So, so we recently launched um, our cost transparency product on the AWS marketplace. Um, this is really bridging the gap between, you know, that that total view was spent. So you have your cloud spend and cloudability, um, and you need to connect that to the other things that you might have on premise, um, and and you know also labor costs, you know you know, hardware costs, things that you may still need to maintain. Um, and, and so the cost transparency helps you do that. We launched on the AWS marketplace. Um, and, and as part of that, you know, obviously to get help you get up and running, we have a, a services team that will help you get that all connected. And so you, you can understand, you know, the total cost of running the cloud as well as on-premise. Cool, that's great. So. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, bring up, you know, it's reInvent time. So, you know, I want to, I've been asking all partners, right? What, what, which of the launches have, have meant the most for you? Uh, Jeremy, you mentioned, you know, EKS and ECS anywhere um, already. What types of things uh, have gotten you all excited as, as you've been watching? Oh, well, there's been so much. Uh, so a lot of really, uh, really cool, really interesting things. Stuff that's related to cost management, one that I was really excited about was uh, the per millisecond billing now, uh, available in Lambda. Uh, Jeremy and I were both at AWS when we launched the per second billing. Uh, so for EC2, now we've gone you know, even lower down the uh, time measurement stack. And that's fantastic, right? That's great, especially for a service like Lambda where uh, you are uh, running small bits at a time. You know, every millisecond counts, which is a testament to the incredible scale of AWS. Uh, but now that benefit uh, from a cost perspective is passed down to customers and, and something that uh, cloudability handles immediately. You can actually see your uh, costs and, and how they're affected, how they're changed and uh, how they come in per millisecond. But that was a, a really exciting, really cool one. Jeremy, anything from you? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, ECS and EKS anywhere. And I think really what it, you know, I think one of the big things was really around that hybrid infrastructure for customers who are going to need to maintain some on-premise and and some in the cloud. You know, I think it was great to see new things around Outpost. It was great to see the, these offerings that allow you to tie together this um, 
you know, your on-premise workloads as well as cloud workloads, because it is a journey, right? Like I can't snap my fingers and move everything to the cloud right away, much as I might like to do so. I do have a finance team who, who who's trying to keep costs under control. And I think being able to give them that big picture um, uh, through through our cloud ability and, and Aptio cost transparency offerings is powerful, but it's also good to see how Anibus is supporting that journey from an infrastructure side, making sure that we have the tools to make that a kind of a seamless experience across both cloud and on-premise. Thank you, Jeremy. So, you know, we've heard quite a bit about Aptio. And I'm, I'm personally quite excited that uh, you guys are working with us. So where can we find you during reInvent? And uh, for any developers that, that want to learn more about you, where can they get started? Yeah, uh, one, you can visit our booth virtually, of course. Uh, but we also have some sessions uh, that will be available and you can get uh, the recordings of, uh, I think it's uh, MGT281. Uh, will be the definitive guide for container cost management, Kubernetes cost management. Casey Doran is our director of product management there. So if you want to learn more about the, the things that Jeremy talked about uh, from container cost management as well as optimization, that's that's your session. That's where you need to go. Uh, and while there are some cloudability specific things in there, Casey's really going to talk more about uh, general best practices, whether you use cloudability or not, uh, that you can leverage to make your uh, container clusters more cost efficient. So that's that's what I'll call out. Awesome. All right, Jeremy, any, any shout outs for you for uh, reInvent, anything? Uh, That's a big one for me. That, that one's one I, we've taken to heart this year, especially as we're moving to the cloud and, and managing our container costs. So I recommend uh, uh, checking that out as well as, you know, if you're interested, you know, please check out our website at cloudability.com and, and there's free trials available um, also via the AWS marketplace. So I think that's, that's a great opportunity to kind of to, uh, practice yeah, and and get to get a hands-on experience for what we're talking about here today. It's awesome. Yeah, make it easy for people to go out and try it. That's always very helpful. So, I think uh, we we got to wrap up here. We're we're running short on time, but I wanted to thank you both, Eugene and Jeremy, for joining us. It's been amazing. I've learned so much already about Aptio and can't wait to learn more. In fact, I think with all the money that you all will save me on my AWS bills. I'll be able to retire from Howdy Partner, you know? Um, I'm just kidding. I'll never leave Howdy perfect. Partner, ever. I, I can never. Oh, Braden's, Braden's actually kind of maybe looking for me to retire. He, he'd like to take over. What do you think, Braden? I, I, you know, I think something could be arranged here. Yeah, <laughs> AM. <laughs> Coming for so the you, you promised us a follow-up session, though, so we're, we're going to hold you to that, whether it's AM or <laughs> There you go. You'll just have to turn off my Aptio account for a while, and then I'll, you know, need money again and have to come back to Howdy Park. There you go, and then we'll be back on. <laughs> That's right. So thank you for joining us on AWS On Air uh, version of Howdy Partner. You can catch us on Twitch as well. Uh, usually we're on Mondays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, and uh, hopefully with Aptio at some point in the future as well uh, on a full episode where we can see an entire demo of the product too. So we'll catch you soon. Thank you again to everybody for watching and thank you, Jeremy, Eugene, and Braden too. Thank you for co-hosting, Braden. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, gentlemen.